How could anybody that liked Veres and Stockhausen and Schoenberg like doo-wop? But he did. For him, there wasn't a big division between liking that and liking the extraordinary quintuplets he heard on a doo-wop record. He heard them in the same way. For him, these genres and separations didn't really exist. It's one music. He just loved music, period. When Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention emerged onto the international music scene with their 1966 debut, Freak Out, few knew what to make of the record or of the band's prominent frontman. The LP's lurid cover, its satirical content and its combination of various disparate musical forms confused many, unsure whether it was simply a drug-induced joke or something far more vital. Yet on the inside of this double album was a list of influences, 179 names, a few familiar, but the majority obscure, that provided a key to understanding the musical vision of the band's mastermind, Frank Zappa. Zappa was very explicit about his influences. Each column has 23 names in it. I always thought that was quite significant. And he's telling you where he derived everything from. I think Zappa had a strong dislike of lazy, glamour boys and girls. He had a strong dislike of people who are simply popular at school and then strum their guitar and that kind of success just leads on to industry-wide success. He wanted to interrupt that. He wanted, he was the guy who sat at the back of the class. He had his delinquent principles. And part of that was to show very explicitly where he was deriving the materials that he was organizing. And one of his big things is, I'm an organiser, I'm a composer. Give me anything and I'll organise it. And the music that Zappa composed and organised out of these influences was difficult and silly, highbrow and lowbrow all at once. As the band grew in number and their music began to draw a wide base of loyal and ardent supporters, they emerged as a totally unique outfit in the rock world. And Zappa himself, a musical visionary, an artist whose work could not be compared to any of his contemporaries. What we did do was really complex music that he wrote. We came along at a specific time that was perfect. It couldn't have been before, it couldn't have been after. It, it, it had to appear right at that moment. If you were to try to take a group like the Mothers, even 20 years ago, it, it, it would not have happened. At that particular period of time, there was a lot of groups that were playing music that was considered art, if you will. Starting with the Beatles and then the Rolling Stones and the Doors and, you know, I mean, they were trying to do stuff that was artistic. In a sense, they achieved that, but without the complexity that Zappa had in his music. That complexity was due in part to the influence of some of the more obscure names cited within the freakout list. Whereas many of the figures looking to incorporate a new artistic dimension into popular music were becoming au fait with the avant-garde by the end of the decade, Zappa entered the rock world already fully immersed in music from the margins. Since a teenager, he had been particularly drawn to the more difficult works of the iconic classical composers from the first half of the 20th century. These composers were revolutionaries, rewriting the rules and dramatically altering the sonic possibilities of a classical music that had been dominant for the past 200 years, and both their work and their attitude was hugely influential on the young Zappa. During the 19th century, I guess there was a, a musical lingua franca, which was pretty much spoken by every composer, regardless of, of his background. And that lingua franca was, was the Austro-German tonal tradition that grew out of the past of Bach, Mozart, Haydn, Beethoven, and so on and so forth. During the 19th century, that developed very much in Austria and Germany, uh, and to a lesser extent in countries around Austria and Germany. This culminates really in the work of Wagner in the second half of the 19th century, where the existing language is developed to such an extent that it starts to push against its 
supposed barriers, not least in terms of chromaticism, extended time scale, uh, size of orchestra, and so on and so forth. <laughs> Once Wagner's questioned those basic tenets of the Austro-German tradition, then there's a challenge to composers in the degree to which they continue with Wagner's innovations or in some way react against them. There were two distinct channels in this reaction to Wagner, and two key composers who represented both ends of this spectrum were major influences upon Zappa. The Austrian Arnold Schoenberg tried to extend the German Romantic tradition and would eventually abandon musical key altogether and take his work into the domain of atonality. As part of his musical philosophy, he pioneered the 12-tone technique, a widely influential method of imposing a hierarchical order onto composition. While Schoenberg was experimenting with atonality, the Russian composer Igor Stravinsky was developing techniques of both writing in two keys at once and creating new rhythmic structures. The innovations of both of these composers would have a profound effect on 20th century classical music. In Schoenberg's case, he felt that Wagner's example of moving in an increasingly chromatic direction had to be a base point from which developments occurred. And so during the very late 19th century and the early 20th century, Schoenberg's work becomes increasingly chromatic uh, until a point around 1907 or 1908 where it loses any real connection with the tonal tradition, instead becomes fully chromatic. Schoenberg's work, certainly by the 1920s, was little appreciated by his contemporaries. Uh, he was seen, I think, very much as a radical writing highly unpleasant music that seemed to have little connection with the past. Schoenberg's attitude would have been that, in fact, he was desperately attempting to continue the past. Despite the initial suspicion with which his music was greeted, Schoenberg's innovations created an entire musical system, serialism and his practices were echoed throughout the 20th century. Zappa too studied Schoenberg's work, and the Austrian composer was one of the key names from classical music on Freakout's eclectic list. I think the main influence that Schoenberg had on Zappa was in the sense that he realised through Schoenberg one could see all 